Um, Mr. Heineken, present. Mr. Whitehead, Mr. Bell, Mr. Culpepper, here. Mr. Griffith, here. Ms. Peoples, Mr. Chairman, you do have a quorum uh, conductor. Okay, first item on the agenda is GP 1231. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this first item is a uh, GP 1231. It's a special use request uh, to permit a non industrial use. Uh, or a use not specifically related to manufacturing in the I-1 industrial zoning district. Uh, in particular, this request uh, is for a new 1,987 gross square foot Taco Bell restaurant located at 24024 West Nine Mile. Uh, this is uh, on the northwest corner of Nine Mile Road and Telegraph Road. And just for your reference, uh, existing Taco Bell, it's actually an existing Taco Bell restaurant. It's been a Taco Bell or at least a restaurant type use for many years. Uh, what the petitioner is looking to do uh, is, well, let me back up for a second. There's never been a special use on this, prop on this property uh, because now it's in the I-1 industrial zoning district because we're doing a tear down of basically a brand new restaurant, new site plan. Uh, we felt that it would be necessary to go through the special use request in the I-1 industrial zoning district. So that's why Taco Bell is here tonight because this is a special use within the I-1. Again, not a non-industrial use, uh, so again, it has to go through this process through the Planning Commission and ultimately the City Council. Uh, again, existing property, existing Taco Bell restaurant. Uh, to the north, we have a bank. Uh, directly to the west, there's a small shopping center. Uh, to the south, we have a gas station. And directly across the street, uh, there is another uh, restaurant type use. There's a White Castle there. With regard to existing zoning, we have I-1 Industrial on all four sides, so both to the north, to the west, to the south across Nine Mile, and to the east across Telegraph Road. Current restaurant, Taco Bell, uh, I, you have a, a map with your information there, area photo. Uh, you can see that circulation really is not the best on that particular piece of property. Uh, there's a parking lot directly on the east side of the site some parking along the north, and the current drive through actually goes along the west side of the site. Uh, they've had some issues with circulation. Uh, Taco Bell has recently been updating uh, their restaurants uh, with a, a brand new template. And basically what you're seeing here is the new template that Taco Bell wants to put on this particular site. Uh, again, 1,900 uh, square foot building, drive through uh, better circulation, and before this was blocked off, that didn't allow access around the site. Now there's better circulation on the site. New template from the standpoint of exterior uh, with block on the bottom, brick, and then other uh, amenities on the building itself, metal, uh, glass, uh, plus additional lighting on the outside. Basically it's an upgrade to what is there right now. Cigar to parking. Um, that is one of the issues that staff will deal with. Again, you're here to uh, determine whether or not this uh, use should go within the I-1 I Industrial Zoning District. In the I-1 District, uh, staff, planning department actually does the reviews of site plans and approvals of site plans. Um, so you're here again tonight to determine whether or not this type of use can go in that site. Again, it's been a restaurant for years. Uh, it's just an upgrade to what is currently there right now with better circulation, better looking building. Uh, I will talk about parking though. They do meet their parking requirements. Um, they meet all their setback requirements for that particular zoning district. And I think with that, I'm going to turn over to the petitioner. Uh, for question, Mr. Mayor. Sure. Uh, a couple of questions. Uh, did it have to get this? Permission when it originally went it in hasn't there. it hasn't had special use it hasn't been had special use before okay yeah so it, it existed without the special use before it was constructed under that however because we have a brand new site plan tear down the building that felt it was necessary to go through the special use because in I one industrial it requires it and so has there been any particular problem as far as this particular kind of use in this location and, and not that I not that I'm aware of no uh, this. I, I, I know down at the south end of it there where it, where it is what we call currently. Here, right here. Right. Uh, is there ample room there for people going in that way uh, to go around to the right? Yeah, there's there's enough room between what this vehicle would be in right. here. This is a very generous radius on here. 
Uh, the fire department has put a template on here they can get around the site as well. Uh, so if for a regular vehicle with this such a generous radius here, there's no problem with vehicles making that turn. It seems to be one way all the way around. It is. It? Yep, it will Drive be one way all the way around. And again, with that, I'm going to turn it over to the petition. Good evening, Eric Rauch with Design Engineers, 2183 Plus Drive, Brighton, Michigan, 48114, here tonight on behalf of Sundance Incorporated, who are franchisees for the Taco Bell Corporation here in Southeast Michigan. Uh, Sundance uh, purchased this uh, facility and building about 10 years ago, and it's been operating as a Taco Bell with the drive through uh, for over 30 years, sometime around 1980 this was constructed for over 30 years and operating there, uh, and quite inefficiently, quite frankly. Uh, touched on and it's just a thorough overview. Uh, it has a uh, inefficient traffic movement right now. You can't certainly navigate around the building <coughs> at all, so when you come in off Telegraph Road, you must exit all onto Nine Mile Road. A uh, very difficult uh, site to navigate. So when we started uh, early on taking a look at this site, we felt it was best to do a cost to rebuild completely, tear down the existing building, the parking features, and start from scratch, build a building that's uh, efficient and, and safe and, and do the same with the site too. So that's what we're presenting to you tonight. Uh, we work closely uh, with the city, uh, with the planning staff to develop a site layout, uh, which not only meets your standards and requirements, but we feel is safe and efficient also. And uh, that took a lot of uh, uh, thinking outside the box in this particular instance because we have uh, some constraints on the site, that being uh, that the site is a little bit on the smaller side, but we also have a significant right-of-way uh, along Nine Mile Road, uh, which even though the property is described to this area here, we have about an additional 20 or 30 feet uh, that we cannot use in this area. And of course, we're encumbered by uh, two frontages, uh, which create uh, screening and parking setbacks and things of that nature, uh, which we must, uh, which we want to abide to. Um, we're keeping the existing entrance uh, from Telegraph Road that was reconstructed within the last couple of years. It's all concrete. It's really nice. We're keeping that. Uh, but as you enter in, uh, the circulation pattern uh, changes quite a bit. Uh, a, a patron can come in. There's angled parking uh, along the north end, the west end, uh, and the east end. Uh, they can enter into the drive through lane, which has stacking for 10 vehicles, and there's 22 parking spaces. Uh, and of course, they can serve circumnavigate uh, around the building and throughout the site efficiently. Uh, we have a new entrance along Nine Mile Road that's uh, in very poor shape right now, so we wanted to upgrade that. And, and of course, we have turning radiuses in here that meet fire department specifications. Uh, not only has your fire department reviewed it, but we run it through our turning radius program within our CAD files where we can actually take the vehicles and run it through and, and it meets the radius requirements uh, for <coughs> emergency vehicles. Uh, pedestrian access, uh, uh, we provide that off of Telegraph Road here with the, an extension of the sidewalk and, and uh, both a signed and painted uh, crosswalk area. The same on Nine Mile Road, both signed and painted crosswalk area, and we've had a, have a painted crosswalk area here to uh, access the barrier-free space along the west side. Uh, one of the difficulties in the layout of this site was providing uh, enough drive-through stacking, the 10 stacking spaces, without encumbering any of the other areas. Uh, right now what happens is, is that the uh, drive-through window is in about this location here. So when a car comes in at about the fifth space, uh, you create this bottleneck area right here as you enter in off a of Telegraph Road. That, of course, is not safe for the city, it's not good for Taco Bell, uh, so that was really one of our main objectives here was to improve that situation. We're able to do that by taking the existing building prototype, we're providing uh, Taco Bell's smallest building prototype, and mirroring the interior and flipping it so that the drive-through pickup is here. And so that allowed us to get a significant amount more stacking uh, because now we get to stack around two-thirds of the building and not just a third of the building. So that's provided a big, uh, uh, I think a bit, uh, pretty big increase in efficiency and, and also in safety because we no longer have this bottleneck situation uh, on the site. So, so we really uh, are happy about the, that and, and work closely with the planning staff to develop this uh, layout. Uh, in regards to the building itself, um, we've been in your community for 30 years. We, we didn't want to just come in and plop 
down an EFIS or stucco looking Taco Bell, which is what you usually see. And so uh, we're coming in with uh, upgraded building materials. Uh, in the first few feet, uh, typically what this is is uh, really EFIS throughout the entire building, so it looks like a shoebox building with uh, EFIS material throughout, but we've decided to upgrade that. In the first three or four feet, we have this uh, natural stone product here. Uh, this is well cultured stone, but looks natural. And uh, again, adds a lot of mass to the bottom, so it has a timeless feel to the to the building itself, and creates something that uh, uh, is definitely a lot more uh, appeasing. Uh, above it, then, uh, for the majority of the building itself, is this uh, brick here. This is the color sample. The renderings tend to come out a little bit more colorful than I would like for some reason, but this is the material here, so you can see that the brick. Uh, are, are substantially earth toned and, and um, subdued a lot and fit in with the character of the city. And then the accent orange here, which is, uh, I don't know why it looks like that bright, but it's, it's this color here. It's, a, it's a more of a burnt orange brick, uh, again, in the earth tones, and, and we feel like a, a significant upgrade over what the corporation would like us to do. Uh, but recognize that we've been here for 30 years, want to be a good neighbor, and want this to. Uh, it's on a major intersection. We feel like uh, this is a great uh, property to uh, upgrade uh, and do it right and to make sure that we're, we're being good neighbors here in the community. Um, we're also prioritizing a significant amount of landscaping. We're preserving everything that we can, which is uh, put a, uh, some locust trees and cherry trees along the frontages. And then we're adding a significant <coughs> amount of landscaping to the house. You can see a lot of shrubs, a lot of plantings uh, throughout the interior. Uh, again, just to upgrade all these shadows, I can tell you something here that's uh, nicer than your standard Taco Bell. Uh, something that's upgraded. What is there now? So, with that, I'll turn it to uh, the board for any questions. To the chair. Uh, I know we only supposed to be looking at the R1 uh, non zoning, but two things that stand out to me in this is number one is I like the idea of you doing the landscaping. Because looking at that corner, that corner could use some uh, some sprucing up. And with the landscape you have, I think it would definitely set that corner off. The second thing that's appealing to me is the building. I mean, I'm not a Taco Bell eater. Don't put Taco Bell. But the, the decor of the building, the reconstruction of the building, will set that corner off. And it looks a lot different than the Taco Bell you see, or I think it's Southfield. So I, I think this is a great uh, contribution to that corner. I, I think it would go great. Thank I have you. a question. Uh, as far as the drive through lanes, are there going to be any changes as far as how that's set up as far as the drive through lane? Yeah. Um, the drive through lane is significantly more efficient than what you have now, and that's both because of the building and because of the drive through functions. Uh, so, about 65% of Taco Bell's business is now done through the drive through. That's actually more than McDonald's and Wendy's and the burger places. And uh, so what they've done is in the new building, they actually have two preparation lines, one specific for the drive through and one specific for the dining room. So it allows them to significantly, much more efficiently, uh, prepare the food and get it out through the drive through So it, that turnover is a lot faster, and you don't see the backups uh, that you would normally see. Uh, secondly, the way that these are ordered is much more efficient. So there's a uh, order confirmation display on the uh, speaker box. So it cuts down on some of that back and forth uh, talk and, and that people see their order and make sure that it's correct. And particularly with Taco Bell, we're going to change the what's specifically on their mm -hmm. items mm -hmm. and such. It helps quite a bit. Uh, so that, that too, uh, is, is creates just a lot, <coughs> a lot more efficient than, than what's there now. And that helps Taco Bell, quite frankly, because yeah, a lot more people come through the drive through when it's more efficient and it's, it's just safer for the community. Good, good. That's my favorite spot to <laughs> go for fast food. So <laughs> I'm using the drive-thru, so that's, that's good to hear. Right. And that's just a single lane, right? That's uh, yeah, it's just a single lane. Yeah, I know McDonald's recently they have a lot of double lane menu boards and such, but that's not the, the case here. So, yeah. To the chair, that, that was a question I was going to ask. Mm -hmm. It's going to be double lane, and you're only going to have one, uh, I call it cashier's window? Um, Yes. Yes. There's one. There's no prepay window. Yeah. Um, yeah okay. The Taco Bell study show that it doesn't improve efficiency at all. So. <laughs>
pay here, pick up down, and the deck will pick up. Yeah, a lot of times it creates a gap between those yeah. two windows yeah. as unnecessary. So. Okay. Right. Mr. Bale. Yes, thank you. Uh, where is, if I'm looking here right, uh, it appears that right on the corner is where you actually do the ordering? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, And given the fact that about 65% of your patrons will use the drive through uh, which apparently will not be exiting onto Nine Mile, they'll be coming back out and going uh, on, onto uh, Southern Route. They uh, can't Unless they it. circle all the way back around and go out. <coughs> uh, um, and, and my question was, I'm, I'm through that intersection a great deal, particularly going south on Nine Mile and then, and then going uh, west on Nine. Uh, and I have noticed that traffic trying to turn left coming out going east, trying to turn east coming uh, out on the Nine Mile, uh, that well, really, creates, it really creates a traffic hazard when you're exiting to the south. Exiting, turning. And trying, going right. left. It, that, that's, and because they're trying to cross a, a, line, a line of traffic that's that's wanting to go west on Nine Mile, mm -hmm. uh, as, as well as get into a very short uh, section of Nine Mile there that is waiting at the traffic light uh, right. that's backed up usually way past that exit. And so my suggestion would be to be right hand, right turn only exiting that exit. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, it would be right turn only exiting the other exit also because that's one way on Telegraph. Mm -hmm. but, um, uh, would you have a problem with that? It, I'm, I'm just curious. Uh, uh, no, I, you know I think we, you know, probably like engineering it to take a look at it. And well, sure, see, absolutely. You know, what their thoughts were on it. I don't see any concern with but, it really. But that, that that's really what the traffic move becomes anyway is because of the concern that you just mentioned. Yeah, that that exit is very close to the Telegraph Road intersection and the and the light there, and that's a, that's a pretty busy intersection, uh, as every intersection on Telegraph is. Uh, but that would be my only safety concern, I think. Yeah. Um, We'd be willing to do whatever the city felt was best. Uh, but outside of that, it looks like, uh, and particularly the facade that you're doing there, I think is oh a yeah. massive improvement. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm like Mr. Coal Pepper. I'm not a, uh, a much of a fast food eater uh, anymore. Regrettably, I was for many years. <laughs> <laughs> like that corner. That like that corner. Uh, that like that corner. Like that corner. Right, but I think it will uh, improve the looks of that corner. In yeah. fact, I was talking to a couple of people this afternoon that do frequent that Taco Bell, or at least they did. They, they, they've actually <laughs> stopped frequenting it, and I told them it was going to be uh, upgraded and modernized, and I think you'll appreciate it. And, and they were thanking me for it, uh, for doing that, and I said, well, I'm not doing it. I'm just looking at it and trying to, trying to make it a good, a good site plan. But uh, they are uh, long-time patrons of Taco Bell, and, and are glad to see some improvement coming to this. Any more questions? Or things? Maybe I've been to this a few times, and uh, you know the circulation is pretty poor. And I think this is a great solution. I think the corner needs something. The elevation, I think, the architecture looks nice, and uh, I think it'll be a good addition to uh, South Dillon Lights. We don't need that study session. I look forward to hearing that next week. That's quite good to hear you. Okay, I guess at this point I'll open up to the public thing by having questions or concerns. Okay, well, I guess that wraps it up. Uh, good job. Thank you for stopping by. Okay, okay maybe by May. Um, we do have a public hearing next week. Yeah. I'll probably pay this back for each and every case. Um, but this will be on your agenda next week for uh, for recommendation from the planning commission. Yep. Is that the same? George Walsh. Yep. There's there's no waivers required on this. Or um. Or did I miss it? Uh, we'll deal with that through the through the site plan stuff. Um. I don't believe that. Oh, we're just we're, we're just doing special here. Just special here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's 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 why I went running out my mouth up there talking about that, and I said, well, maybe this wasn't the time to do that. Give me a, give me a moment here. <coughs>
and uh, the 75 percent or 80 percent of the portion is going to be uh, occupied by uh, South Philippine care and we're putting you in a small area. Uh, actually generally we're going to use this much of area only but this much we're going to use for only storage area and here will be the patient waiting room and uh, here will be the this much of area we're going to utilize for only for the prescription drug medications. We don't like the big chain store like uh, CVS and Baldwin who carries like uh, foods, uh, liquors, smoking. We're not going to carry all the stuff. It's just for the uh, urgent prescription drug medication which was done by doctors and um, nearby uh, all the people so the South Coast can use a pharmacy. So we're going to use a small pharmacy, an independent chain, a small pharmacy. And your pharmacy elsewhere? Is, are you relocating or is this yeah, a, uh, are you relocating from where? Uh, from this to the Chair? Yeah. Two questions. Oh, sure. Two <laughs> questions. To start. Does there have to be any construction done within that area to make this feasible to do what you want to do? Uh, no, just we have to make a. Uh, it's only been building. Uh, we have to just put the shelves in the wall. Okay, so the so space there, you don't have to t turn on no one again, do anything within no it. No, any change in the construction. Uh, number two, uh, y y your hours for having your pharmacy open are going to be the same hours that you have your other facility openers. Hours are going to be different. Uh, what are your hours of operation? Same hours, like same 9 hours. to 6. 9 to 6? Yeah. Is that daily? Uh, Monday to Friday. Monday to Friday. Nine Saturday, to 9 to 2. Wait a minute, hold on again, hold on. 9 to 2 what day? 9 Saturday. to 2. On Saturday. On Saturday. Okay. So this operation is open to the public? Yes. Yeah, what there's no distinction made in the zoning ordinance that it has to be just for the uses within the building. Um, the other one, if you recall, the other one was specifically for the doctors in the building. This one in particular, while it will serve the urgent care, is also open to the Yeah, walk-in. So what percentage of your business do you think would be just walk-in? Uh, because it's a busy area and uh, there's some kind of apartments and as I say, lots of uh, doctor offices uh, over here too, so they can use as a veterinary hospital over there. Uh, there's a couple of doctors over here. Uh, this is the residential area. Uh, these are some kind of apartments. So all the people uh, can use and do have delivery service to them. Some older people cannot come and we can deliver the medication to them too. Okay. Uh, are you going to have a drive through pick up window? Uh, no, right now we don't have any plan of making drive through. Okay, because I, I was by there this afternoon uh, riding around and I noticed that this area is jetted out uh, to the west, on the west side of the building. That's because originally this was... So the bank is... Who had the bank initially? I thought it looked like that. Yeah. It, it, it has been since covered over... Yeah, and this was the drive through right. for the Comerica Bank. Uh, and then... And, and, and noticing that that's where you're going to put the... Uh, uh, pharmacy part, it would be easily converted back to a drive-thru. Yeah. Uh, not that I would necessarily have a problem with it outside of the fact that it needs to be shown on the plan uh, so, so we know how the stacking and so forth would go. Um, but, but outside of that, uh, the site looks like uh, ample room for what you're trying to do. Uh, in fact, I'm uh, tickled to see that <laughs> it's got more room than uh, most other sites where you, people are trying to crown things, too many things into, um, uh, and, and the entrances and exits seem, seem to be relatively safe. I'm a little concerned about this, this uh, northerly exit, northeast exit on uh, Mount Vernon uh, being so close to the traffic light there. Um, I could see during busy times of day that could get a little hazardous, I guess, but, but it's already there, already existing. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, and, and I don't see a, a good point in, in, e in either moving it or, or uh, changing it. But outside of that, uh, looks, looks pretty good on the surface to me. If I may, with regard to, uh, there was a mention about all, all the rooms, there's actually 18 more parking spaces on site than we actually need. Um, but I think it's better to have Absolutely. more spaces than not enough on site. So, 30 spaces are required to have 48 other jobs. Uh, okay.
to the chair? Yeah. I think also uh, this is approved that the residents will be happy about this because uh, we're going through some other things about they can walk there, they can bike there, they can ride, and they have to get their uh, so-called medicine dishes there rather than have to get in their car and drive somewhere. So I think uh, with the buildings and the residents and the other commercial areas, I think this will be a, an asset to them. So that's good. There is one other quick thing. When I was there, I noticed the area to the on the western edge, and I see it's on here as a access easement to the church. Mm -hmm. Is that actually this this property is just an easement on it for the? No, it's actually a separate, separate piece of property. Oh. Yeah. You can see the property line on the plan right. actually. Right. Yeah. So the church actually owns that. Yeah, the church actually owns it. Oh. It's, it's, it's right here. Right. It actually is access to Mount Vernon. It is a right hand turn only or left hand turn only. Mm -hmm. Right. Didn't allow left hand turn or right hand turns on this property. Yeah, it is a separate driveway for the church. Cool. That was negotiated one. And but, they but, but access from this property on onto it, we'll have to get out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I, I thought mm -hmm. your arrangement made all sorts of nice little amenities for traffic flow. Mm -hmm. you know, it improved traffic flow immensely. Uh, one little thing. I, just, I noticed the bike rack on South Road. <laughs> I think that's great. Awesome. I do actually ride my bike in that area, so maybe I'll just park. We nobody ever uses it. Staff is promoting that. Our site plans do come through now. And actually, on the next page, you'll see again by grass being added to the property. Things that are going to be coming before both planning commission and city council. Oh, good. Yeah. 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 I own the building. He owns the farm. Yeah. You know, the question of concerns. Is this your first facility in Southfield? Or? No. Yeah. Yeah, this is the first. Because I think you said you're moving from Lakeville Village? Yes. Good, we need it there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Where are you located in Lakeville Village? Yes. Which street? Um, let's be on the 696 and Southfield. It's a, it's a small area, so we want to a little bit bigger one, so to expand it. Do you anticipate more growth in the future uh, <coughs> in this, within this building here? Uh, this, is, this area is a more, uh, like, so many tropics and it's more visible, so I think so. There should be a more, uh, in the future, might be good. You know.
but the, I've only seen fender benders. I've never seen a serious accident in there. Sure. But even when it was vacant, there'd be accidents there. I'd say, wow. And of course, it only happens when it's a little wet. And the same thing when people sneak around and make an illegal right hand turn on the stop, and the person goes left hand turn, and then they're going to turn in, the right hand, that guy's sneaking in there, bang, because it's so short. So you were on this stuff. I wasn't even going to mention it. <laughs> Cause that's, uh, but I just think, I just point that out. Uh, I, I really you're appreciate you doing that because it, it is kind of obvious that, it, that it's very close to uh, that major thir major thoroughfare, major intersection, and, uh, and and so I see where it could easily. I refer to Mount Vernon as Mount Vernon Expressway. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I had trouble getting out because <laughs> see I use you know that little that little uh, what you would might say thinks the easement. Of course I use that. Okay, <laughs> I'm having trouble making sure. Uh, on to just turning left. Right. It's so, uh, it's the traffic is so so bad. I can tell you why that easement is, well, it's not an easement. They own the Sambles restaurants used to own that property back in the early 70s. And we protested. They were going to build Sambles there. That's probably why you have that 25 foot, uh, not an easement, they own the property, like right. they say. Access. So I just give you a little historical, I'm, I'm sur surmising that. I still got the map for that problem, by the way. <laughs> uh, but what I was here for was uh, I'm kind of curious why I got a legal notice. And the reason why is when they built the bank in 77, I didn't get any notice. And I'm, surmi I, and I'm surmising that the, the reason why you send out notices, the reason why we're here, because I just bought this book, you know, the zoning book, is that other section 5.22-1, that's the authority that <coughs> we're here for, and that's why that's why the notices were sent out. Right. Now they say 300 feet. How is that determined? That's determined yeah. from the property lines. Lot line to lot line. Lot, lot, yeah, from the lot lines all the way around on all four sides, we go 300, actually we go 350 feet. Yeah, I saw in the On minutes, all sides. Yeah, I saw in the minutes previous the 350. So, what? A, okay, then this is just point of information. It's not to do with the pharmacy. If that was a vacant lot today, and they were going to build a church, or, or they're going to build a say, pharmacy or a bank, like America Bank, would I receive a notice? Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. So, yeah. either they changed the rules, or there was administrative error going back 34 years. Been that I would have to say that's possible. No, I'm just, yeah. see, I don't do this for a living. Yeah. Right. You see what I'm saying? And this is all new to me. And I was just kind of surprised. In the back of my mind, I figured Comerica Bank is out of my territory. So I was kind of surprised. And then I, got this, and I, then I did a little research and got this and looked into it. And I, I saw the 300 foot limit and all that. And that's all. Yeah, that's what the state now requires, and, that's, and as uh, Jeff said, we go a little further than that. <laughs> I saw 350. Okay. Right. So in the olden days, and you were probably here, Mr. Bell. <laughs> From a <laughs> woman. <laughs> well, okay. In the olden days, that prop, maybe there was a shorter limit or something, or it wasn't necessary. Or it may not have been necessary. Yeah, yeah. I, I right. saw on some summarizing. I just, a little point of information. Right. Yeah. The pharmacy is, is better benign. Okay, right. it's not going to change anything, exactly. and it's better the building be occupied. Oh yes, because they used to have they used to sell cars there, hmm. and oh. things like that. Right. Yeah, it's been. And so yeah. when you talk, when it was vacant, uh, in, uh, some of the pipes outside were cut and taken away. Uh. Pardon? Some of the outside pipes were cut and taken away. So pipes? Yeah. What do you mean pipes? Oh, you mean Your people people Yeah, stealing. Yeah. 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 When it was vacant. When it was when the building was vacant, people would steal the pipes of the outside exterior pipes. Oh, you mean like the drains? Right. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. So that's why I'm glad that somebody's going to move in there. Right. Oh, oh, you mean even while you were gone? While I was gone, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Boy, yeah. that's pretty boy. Yeah, I know. Great. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, that's right on the that's, right. that's in the center of the universe. Right here. The back pipe on the other side where the okay. No, I not on the main road, but but okay, it is in, in uh, the back. Wow. I know houses that are nearby, they cleaned out. Yeah. You know, copper. 
I was surprised. Is this rain type? Okay. I don't know what they're made of, but they're like Okay, well, thanks for stepping in. Thank you. Anyone else? Chair, do you have anything? No. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, like again, uh, this is on your schedule for next week for presentation. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot. Laura, you know, this is coming in telling you age, man. It's telling you age.
directly to the west of the building, there is a bike rack for 10 spots. Yep, yep. Um, they're also adding a new dumpster. Uh, they're redoing the lot, uh, restriping. And basically, that's the issue with this particular uh, location of the petitioner is here today. And, uh, I'll let them kind of come up and if, if they have anything to add. Uh, you want to talk about the oh, building? Yeah, the building? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Good evening, gentlemen. My name is Andy Donato, Facility Management Partners, representing Mango Stewart. Um, I got some pictures here, actually, because uh, I think one of the questions that would come up kind of printed these last minute, gentlemen. What it is, this is the um, back in area. Excuse me. This is the back in area. If you were to back out of this parking place here, um, those pictures represent the posts, so you don't have to worry about the cars actually hitting the building if they back up. That was important at some point as far as like you know somebody backing out of the area and not having a back in area. So um, as far as our hours of operation here, they're going to be looking at probably seven in the morning to eight at night tentatively. Um, they're going to be circulating their clients through probably four to six at a time, depending on you know appointment times. And then they're going to have obviously a tra trainer with the the uh, person boxing or the two people boxing. So. Um, I think we just had heard from Dave and Alan. Actually, Alan is the uh, broker of record for the acquisition uh, from Court Partners, and um, he is here representing Emanuel also, along with uh, Emanuel's direct broker from, uh, I'm sorry, your last name. David Wack. Yes, I'm sorry, Dave. Um, so, Emanuel couldn't be here. He's in Europe currently. Um, he got back late last night. Oh, he did? Okay. So he couldn't be here. You are correct in all respects that he wants to stand out of Detroit and uh, get to the suburbanites, as he calls them, to try to gain some more traction on the market out here in Southfield and Oakland County. So um, I'm not sure what else I can tell you about it. We did make these changes here because of the parking here. We know we recognize we're going to have to put this new concrete in here. The whole lot is concrete now. Okay. Um, through the chair. Just so this is, we're dealing with the use and not specifically the site plan. Okay. A um, couple things. Just a clarification on the hours of operation. You said Monday through Friday. 7 a.m. to 8 in the evening. Okay, and what yeah. about weekends? Yeah, the 7, seven days, days a week. And that's tentative hours of operation. Right. Yeah, again, I'm sorry. Okay. 7 to 8, 7 days a week. Yeah. I don't think he has his business plan complete yet. But okay, and, and the intent was, if I heard you correctly, this is basically appointment. This is not a walk-in type of facility. Right. So there will be a be limited number of, of people coming in at any one time. Right. There's going to be just a few uh, walk-ins actually by possibly uh, some merchandise. He's yeah, going to sell shirts out of a case. That's so it. This is not like an open gym where people no, come in. No. Not a retail center. For an hour or something. No. No. It's going to be. By appointment only. Okay. Appointment and only. And training. Through the chair, yeah. if you could talk about maybe like previous uses at this Actually, that's what I was just going to have Alan say because Alan has uh, a long history with the building. His father owned it for I don't know how long, Alan. Yeah. Um, I actually represent the uh, landlords, uh, which is Bonnie Fry. Um, I'm actually very, very familiar with the building. The building itself, for the last at least 30 years, has never been used as a manufacturing or a light industrial usage. It's always been used as a commercial. And it goes all the way back to probably three uses ago. My father owned a company called Sentimental Journey that moved in there just after Jefferson Beach Marina. Um, if you're familiar when Jefferson Beach Marina moved out, then it was as a classic car showroom for many for many years. And then the Fries acquired it and it went into I think it was called Auto it was called Auto One or Auto Zone or Auto One that was the prior tenant. Right. And then the existing tenant, which is White <coughs> White Reproduction, has been in there for the last uh, ten years. Okay. Um, so if you look at the the use of the of the property uh, it's never been used as a manufacturing or light industrial building. It's always been used as commercial. Commissioner Bale, uh, if I could, uh, I was out there and rode around the, the property this afternoon, <coughs> or at least behind it and so forth. You don't you don't go around, <laughs> but. Uh, I know currently there seems to be, I presume, from your neighbors to the north, a lot of cars. In fact, this whole area here, uh, right that's here. it right there yeah. uh, on the north side, <coughs> was just stacked up with cars. I presume that your neighbor is using it. Uh, that, is, that is correct. Um, the existing tenants over here, 
um, has come to white reproduction and they need some additional parking and has asked white if they could just park their cars here. Once, um, if, if we're successful in this rezone and Emmanuel does take possession of the building, um, there will be no other, there will be no vehicles there because we're going to use that as, leave it as gravel, okay, which is existing and use that as emergency uh, access. Because my major concern uh, and my question to you is, do you feel that the parking that is marked out on the site is adequate? Yes. For your yes. Uh, the use More than adequate. Area? Yes. Okay. Right. Uh, because that was my original concern, but given what you just said, that this is not a primarily a walk-in no. training gym. It's, it's, it's not like a powerhouse gym where okay. anybody can just right. go there and uh, apply for membership and you know, take everybody. It's, it's all going to be private. Okay. And, and by appointment only. And do you intend to have uh, matches there uh, where, where you would have spectators and so forth? To the best of my knowledge, no. Okay. I think if they do, it's going to be invite only, as we said. Uh, you know. Because you could run out of parking in there. Very easily. Big hurry. We talked to him about yeah. this at great length. Okay. I explained okay. that to him. He's yeah. very comfortable <coughs> with the fact that you know he's got 31 spaces less than two for the bike ride, but he's pretty comfortable with it. And we, yeah. we were very open and honest with him and said, you know, you recognize yeah. you have a limitation here, which is parking. And and particularly given the fact you're on a major thoroughfare, and and if and if you've got a parking problem, they're going to be backed up on the telegraph road, right? Trying it's to find place, right. and, and that could right. be right. So I, I'll take you at your word that you've got what you need. Okay, to the chair. Well, I was going to ask the other question is that there will be no quote unquote entertainment. I was going to ask oh. that. When I was out there yesterday, I <coughs> guess my point. The uh, I call it the screening wall that backs up to the residence. Yeah. That that looks pretty good, and I I'm conscious now of any time there's something that backs up to the neighborhood, we yeah. got issues. So I, I, I the wall looks okay to me now. Was there any plan to do anything out there to that wall? Looks okay, but I was just concerned about no, the neighbors. No, not at this point. Okay. I mean, it I looks guess good, if nothing else, you could paint it. You know, right. that would be probably the only thing. I yeah, know. I saw. The, I looked at the wall. It looked good. I looked at the lighting. It looked good. Now I'm <coughs> just concerned, you know, that uh, we were okay with the wall. And right. we're going to have an open hearing, and the neighbors will come. So I just didn't want to hear that. Yeah, sure. Okay, so the wall well, we is, actually looked at the wall yesterday when we were there, yeah. and it was actually in very, very good shape. Good shape. The yeah. Wall yeah. looked absolutely. There's some good. minor tuck pointing, like in this area. Uh, but it's very and the far right, yeah. I yeah. saw maybe it two or three blocks there, the far end, and maybe yeah. looked like the wall looked good. And that was mm -hmm. my concern. Yes. I have okay. a question as far as your operation. Will this be pretty much the same as it is in Detroit? Mm. The same type of operation is totally different from what you're doing in Detroit. I'm, I'm actually not familiar yeah. with his operation. I don't know either. Right. I'm just going by what he recommended that he was going to his use was going to be for this space. What, what I do remember him saying is that that's part of the the challenge that some of the professional suburbanites who are going down to the to the uh, original gym. There's a lot of walk-ins because of tourists, because of historic, and this is more of a private, you know, one-on-one -on -one training facility. And so I think in that respect, it's going to be different than the gym down in Detroit. That's why I remember Emmanuel right. saying. Yeah, he, he did state that to us, too. He said he wants to go after some, you know, northern Oakland County upscale clients, is what he calls them, and wants to uh, get them on their lunch breaks and, you know, get them on their breaks in the afternoon and try to get them in their box and then exercise. And, you know, they're going to obviously have trainers. I don't know how he's structured in that manner, whether it's trainers that work directly for them or if they're private trainers, but, you know, the trainer will show up, a boxer will show up, or they'll box together or separate and we're going to train on bags and, you know, do what boxers do, you know. Mr. Lee, Steve, I was just wondering, if, are there any uh, plans for exterior improvements to the building at all? Yeah, there is. Not to the building itself, um, just to the site. You know, we've got some landscaping that's going to go around the sign. Um, I noticed we've got these here late, late this afternoon, as you guys know. Um, there was supposed to be a low hedge here to mirror the one that's here in front of this bike rack. So there would be some symmetry in the front on both sides of that sign. Didn't make it here. I don't know why. Um, that, that we can make sure that gets on there for next week. Uh, we do have this locust tree that we have here, which is a hardy, you know, breed. As you know, it'll take the salt, you know, and it should grow and thrive. This um, is also going to be a low hedge here to cover the cars um, because they're closer to the road. Um, there is an existing U hedge here that uh, exists in front of the building. It's in great shape. It's not too overgrown. It's only, you probably noticed it's, it's only cut, yeah. about two and a half, three feet tall. Um, he hasn't decided what he wants to do with that canopy yet. So 
so we're not quite sure, you know, what. Yeah. They can't need some reconstruction. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, okay, yeah. it's old, and, you know, yeah, yeah, my thought is he's going to want to brand it, and obviously that's going to be a separate, you know, yeah. area, and we get into signage with the city and try to yeah. get their acceptance on, but he wants it to pop, he wants it to, he wants, he wants somebody to drive by, and he wants to see crap, big and bold, and he wants people to know that, that, that he's there, you know, so, um, and I think he's got that exposure, you know, on that road, that's for sure. Yeah, do it. So, yeah. Um, that's the improvement. Obviously, site improvements, you know, we're going to restrike, obviously. Um, we do got to make sure that these barrier-free spots, you know, mirror these signs. They're, they're close now. Um, you know, the site improvement back here, again, I got to put concrete in here. We've got to put this dumpster enclosure here that's already here now. And um, there is a small concrete repair here that's noted that um, needs to be rectified, too. Uh, one quick question, if I could, through the chair. Um, being there's residents to the west, uh, and I notice that there's at least two exterior lights there on, on the wall or at right. the wall. Or here on the, on the right. Uh, yeah. uh, and you need to ensure that they are shining away from the residents and into your parking lot. You're talking about on the east. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Residents oh, east. You're right. East. Okay. East, 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 east right. Yeah. 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 East. I don't think wall. I have a picture of them here, but yeah, they're your yeah. typical building flood type light that doesn't go sideways. So the, the throw is forward. On okay. both of those lights. Um, but th that, those lights or any other lights that you have here, you know, if you have any on the building, shining backwards. It, you know. I don't think there is any on the building. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure if there's any floods on the right. uh, exterior of the building. Yeah, just, just to ensure that there's nothing shining the back towards the rest right. or, or into yeah. your neighbors. Well, the, 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 the White Castle next door, I'm sure, probably, I think it's lit up pretty well. Right. Um, I'm sure, you know, probably it may even cover these spots. So. Um, what we'll do is we'll look to see if there's anything on the exterior of the building in terms right. of floods. But I don't think there's anything out there at all. And these two lights cover the whole back, and then it's pretty yeah. bright up front. Yeah. Uh, something that you mentioned that, that is uh, at least a little concern to me is uh, I agree that, uh, that, a, that a crunk building in Southfield needs to, as you put it, pop. It, it needs to really catch your eye. Uh, but at the same time, and I know that there's, <coughs> there's lots of windows in the front of this building, and we, we, are, we have a pretty strict sign ordinance in Southfield, and uh, uh, but we, we t it seems that we have a, a relatively lenient ZBA, Zoning Board of Appeals, which also oversees signage, and uh, I would I would encourage you to be careful about putting signage in, in all the windows. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, that's that's. I don't think that's what he, he actually wants. The opposite of that. Yeah, he wants right. the opposite. He wants to feel. He, he wants everybody big to deal to be able to see inside. Sounds, see what's sounds going like on. my place. We're wiping yeah. out all of the interior offices and everything in there so you can see through. Yeah. He yeah. wants sounds, people sounds driving good. by to be able to see him you, you went working the out box. And you went the direction yeah. I hope you would. Mr. Cole, that's what Emmanuel. Yeah, the reason I just commissioner, the reason I think you said about the pop is that the canopy. Exactly. That's. Okay, it's, right. it, it's putting some up there, quarks or whatever it may be, is to have that canopy lit up so that pops out to the public, they come back. Exactly. That's what I, okay. Correct. All right, I just want to make sure yeah. I had it in my mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. Leitner? I would think it would probably be a good idea for the next meeting to have maybe a elevation to show what's going yeah. on. Yeah, okay. I've got that on my here. Okay. on the bike rack again. <laughs> this is even a, a better location and I don't want to open up a can of worms here, but what if this is a, some sort of a sculptural bike rack that gets higher up in the air, sculptural boxing bag or punching bag built into it, kind of lets you know what's going on inside, brings a little more attention to you know, I think the whole aspect of it. I don't know if it's in the setbacks or... Yeah, the only issue is that the mm -hmm. The sign official, when anything that's um, like that would be considered part of the signage. Okay. Not that it's not a bad idea, but he's yeah. going to look at. Um, there was a robotic that was proposed to one of our manufacturing, and he mm -hmm. interpreted that as part of the sign. So anything that does with that, you'd have to change the requirement, <coughs> the overall requirement. It would reduce uh, having a message or something. Reduce, was that would reduce. Yeah, but I think there are, there are things that um, if you submit your your building elevation to us, 
we can make some recommendations and some tasteful ways of doing it without violating the sign code. Yeah, and, and if it's like you were saying, if, it, if it's more of an art piece as opposed to a signage type piece, uh, uh, it, it, it might get past it. <laughs> yeah, actually, I have a photo from Grand Valley where they, they had these sculptural canopies and the bikes actually go up them. Yes. Yeah, but but if, as long as it's not iconic to boxing right, or to right, whatever's right, going right, on, right. then it becomes art versus signage. Right, right. That's all. Awesome. Right. Going up, it's right the park bar near, um, near the stadium. Uh -huh. yeah, same thing, it's all metal sculpture. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's good. Simple. Yes. And I'll catch you too. Yep. It's yeah. uh, be a good, uh, good spot to showcase it. Yeah, yeah I saw the one in Grand Rapids that year. It was nice. Yeah. Well, it kind of catches the eye. Yep. I think it's a good use for crack to be there. Mm -hmm. it's a good oh, use for I, I, yeah, I it sounds sure. like it to me. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right. No, no. Good site. Yeah. I think I go past the site plan. Like that. <laughs> well, they're, they're the site plan. We're yeah. just doing special yeah. use this time. Yeah. Okay, okay. Any, any other questions, concerns? I'm going to give you some of our comments. Again, this is on your agenda for next week for recommendations. Um, the, the question or the comment with regard to the elevation is duly noted. We'll make sure that we have an elevation on the front for next week. Right. And uh, we'll make sure that each one of you has a piece of copy of that. Okay, I guess we all fit. Thanks for that.
Any oh. other miscellaneous business? Uh, there was something I wanted to mention. No. Uh, yeah, after the meeting, I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess that uh, means adjourned. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, the 17th. After